Hey Long Beach, it's me, Jesse. And today I'm standing in a part of the city that was once known as the Jungle, a seedy part of old Long Beach that was eventually demolished. But did you know, years before it was known as the Jungle, this part of town was called West Beach. History is all around us, but sometimes it gets a little lost. I'm Jesse Lopez and this is Discovered Long Beach History. Located between Magnolia Avenue, Ocean Boulevard, the LA River, and extending towards the beach, the jungle was known as a seedy environment in the 1950s and 60s. The jungle consisted of many residential apartment buildings, hotels, locker clubs, small beachfront homes, and restaurants. The low-income community was populated by a few thousand people, with some being workers at the adjacent Pike Amusement Park. But the jungle didn't start off as the jungle, far from it. Before it was the jungle, this area was known as West Beach, a part of the city that was instrumental in boosting Long Beach's reputation as the finest seaside resort of the Pacific Coast. But how did West Beach go from having Spanish-style residential resorts like Venetian Square with its modern furnishings, hotel rooms, and private beachside bungalows to a rundown eyesore for the city? Well, for that, we have to go to Brian Chavez of the Historical Society of Long Beach, who can tell us more about the long forgotten West Beach. Brian? Well, Jesse, West Beach is actually called West Beach because it was located in the most western area of Long Beach. And the first major development was a single deck pier at the foot of Magnolia Avenue built in 1885 by the Long Beach Land Company. In the beginning, the area was populated by small buildings and tents for early beachgoers. Eventually, the Magnolia Pier fell into disrepair. A little over a decade later, the Pine Avenue Pier assumed its role serving early beachgoers. And the area around the pier developed into what we know today as the Pike. In order to support the growth of tourism at the Pike, developers to the west of Pine Avenue Pier began to sell subdivisions of West Beach, this led to the famous hotels like the Virginia Hotel and resort communities like Seaside Park. Seaside Park was the first major harborfront subdivision in the region, and for the next three decades, it rapidly developed and grew in popularity as a space for beach homes, apartments, and lavish hotels. West Beach was not only a resort community for civilians, it was also a playground for Navy sailors. Places called locker clubs, which provided beds for sailors to sleep in, also provided mail services and a place for them to store their uniforms and change into civvies. These clubs became an essential part of Navy culture and West Beach life. Sailors, who would often spend their leave at West Beach and the Pike, frequented places like tattoo parlors, arcades, dance halls, swimming on the beach, or just enjoyed a hamburger and fries. Eventually, many factors led to the decline of West Beach. They included the growth of the harbor and breakwater, which contributed to pollution and excess soil deposits, subsidence caused by oil drilling, infrastructure neglect, and a general loss of appetite for the carny culture of the pike. By the late 1950s, the beach was permanently closed for the development of a new Navy landing on West Beach. With no new development, Seaside Park and West Beach transformed into an urban jungle, the jungle. In 1962, after years of neglect, the jungle became the city's first major redevelopment project under the newly formed Long Beach Redevelopment Agency, or RDA for short. The RDA proposed raising all of the structures in the jungle and replacing them with high-rise buildings and a hotel. The movement to revitalize this part of the city was in part aided by a string of articles published in the Press-Telegram newspaper which chronicled the stories of 18-year-old jungle resident Jerry Nunn. Jerry recounted her experiences in the jungle neighborhood and spoke of the living conditions she and others faced. Jerry was also instrumental in the arrest of several of her jungle neighbors. In the late 1960s, the jungle was leveled, buildings were demolished, and all of the rich history of this area was sadly erased. The RDA envisioned a new shiny row of buildings that would occupy this land parcel and be a new beacon for the city. And for the most part, what exists today in the former neighborhood is pretty much what the RDA set out to make. Although the RDA saw this place as a jungle primed for redevelopment, in reality, the jungle was home to marginalized residents abandoned by a changing Long Beach. But what do you think, Long Beach? Do you think the city should have kept more of its West Beach history intact? Or do you approve of what's here today? Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to get more great videos like this one.
Thanks again to Brian Chavez and our friends at the Historical Society of Long Beach for all of their tireless research. To learn how you can contribute to this great organization, please make sure to visit their website, hslb.org. Till next time, I'm Jesse Lopez, and this was Discovered Long Beach History. Thank you.